Hello, freak bitches. About the evolutionary toolkit is that I believe we have exactly the tools for navigating this puzzle. They're built into us also, in addition to this latent program. Um, but we are now in a very dangerous situation because, for example, uh, if Google and other of these online Goliaths start uh, deploying algorithms that decide what we get to talk about and see, then we cannot use the very tools that are necessary in order to escape um, and avoid something like civil war, which frankly... Open I, communication and debate, analyzing all the components of this issue completely objectively. Exactly. Yes, and taking the risks that are necessary with that, and some of the risks are that if we have free and open communication, that some percentage of that communication is going to be reprehensible and deplorable. But that, yes. but that, but that the consequences of suppressing that are so much more dangerous than the consequences of allowing it, that they're not in the same universe. Yes, we I mean, empower yes. those terrible ideas by making them, I mean, electronically taboo. Yeah. And then the point is they're going to fester. Um, whereas if we, dis if we discuss them, we can diffuse the ones that are terrible. We can spot the opportunities that we don't know we have, and we can uh, we can move forward rather than descend into civil war, which and, frankly looks more more and, and more and likely. And this issue with with Google and YouTube, let's say, and these other gigantic internet companies, you know, it isn't a matter of if they're going to produce automated bots that do pre perceptual censorship. They are doing that. Well, to explain it's well, Dad sad, explain yeah, what well, happened. With him. Well, he 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 tweeted the other day that. Um, and I knew this was in the workings because I'd been looking at what YouTube and Google are planning with regards to their artificial intelligence sensors, let's say. You know, they want to get to the point where the, the, appa the appalling video is not even put up. So what happened, I hope I've got this exactly right, but Gad uh, was in the process, you upload a video and then you publish it. And so once you upload it, YouTube has access to it, and they have access to its content, and they informed him that it would be demonetized before he published it. Right, there it so is right here. We put it up on the board. There you go. YouTube thinks that my pointing to astounding hypocrisy is too triggering. There is nothing objectionable, ob obje objectionable in my clip. Unbelievable. Yeah, and that one was a manual review, so I'm wrong about that. That they, Although, how, how in the world they decided that they were going to manually review Gad's video is also, I mean, how many videos are going up on YouTube? What the hell? Why are they manually right. reviewing his? And I mean, Gad Sad is not a radical, right? Not That's at all. the thing. I mean, no. he's an evolutionary biologist, and that makes him a radical. <laughs> now it does, because he's a because biological he's questioning, essentialist. He's questioning what's happening, and by questioning what's happening, you instantaneously get lumped into this right-wing hate group. Yeah. Well, and I mean, he's also making the claim that human beings have an intrinsic nature. And so now there's a new buzz phrase that goes along with that. And so that's that you're a biological essentialist. And you see, so if you're a radical postmodern neo-Marxist, your theory is human beings can be anything that I want to make them into. It's a core doctrine of the theory, and it's part of what makes it intensely totalitarian. Because then human beings are just putty for the molding, eh? and that's part of the, the motivational drive for claiming the radical constructionist claim. There's no biological essence. Well, why do you make that claim? Well, because we want to free people from prejudice and tyranny. It's like, no, that's not why you make that claim. You make that claim because you want to justify your claim that there's absolutely nothing wrong with making over humanity in the in image of your ideology. And, 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 that, and that's, that, that, that was a well-documented intellectual argument that, that, that wove through what happened in communist Russia, for example, because the claim there explicitly was you wipe out the past, there's no real biological identity. You can mold the human of the future in the image of your perfectionistic ideology. And, and, and the, the Russians actually um, sidelined themselves effectively with respect to evolutionary theory. That basically they were so backward uh, on a biological front that as they were deploying this, uh, this very broken ideological uh, toolkit, they were wrecking their ability to think about about how biology works. And so what you're pointing to about evolutionary biologists, it's not just that we question. The content of evolutionary biology is absolutely the opposite of politically correct. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Because nobody tells the biota what's right and what's wrong, the biota does what it does, and those of us who look at it and uh, attempt to understand what those patterns are can't help but be deeply politically incorrect yeah. almost all yeah. the time. Yeah. And so the idea that the, the, that the truth of biology is actually going to become unexpressible 
and we are going to move ahead. We're just going to we're going to uh, we're going to sideline it so that we can move ahead with this ideological stuff. I mean, that is cutting that's off already, your nose. That's already happening. Face. So biology for, is racist and sexist. You, you, you. Uh, well, <laughs> if if I might, um, biology, and we're going to have to go back here in order to collect a tool, but uh, biology does create entities that have the potential for racism in them. In our genomes, we carry the potential for racism for Darwinian reasons. Sexism is a little different, right? It is, so <laughs> I'm about to become very politically incorrect. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, I know. Uh-oh. Uh, it is not possible for male genes to gang up on female genes because all of our genes spend half their time in male bodies and half their time in female bodies, which does not mean that civilization is fair with respect to sex and gender, but it does mean that there's no biological basis for the evolution of a patriarchal force that subordinates women because whatever the patriarchy does, those who are part of the patriarchy become female in the next iteration and they suffer the consequences of it. This is not the case with race. Unfortunately, this is not a good thing, but it is a true thing. In a Darwinian sense, one population can gang up on another population, and it has happened again and again. It explains all of the worst chapters in human history. And so, in some sense, what I'm getting at is that you want to understand that process. And once you understand what your genes are actually up to, and you understand that your genes, their objectives in the universe are not defensible, what your genes want cannot be defended in, in rational terms, then we become free to do something else, to recognize that our genes are up to things that we don't have any reason to honor. Um, and we can, we can basically take them out of the control position. But if we imagine that what our genes is, are, are up to must be all right, and therefore it can't include anything like racism, then we're just stuck. Then we don't have the tools to, to uh, diffuse racism.